Okay guys, welcome to Ultrasync. We're here at a beautiful location at Piccadilly in the heart of London, in the center of London. And I'm here with Francesca Casiraghi. That's right. <laughs> That's right, from, from London Trade Art. And as you can see a little bit from the background already in the backdrops, uh, this is an art inspired episode that we have today where we're talking to Francesca about some amazing stuff that she's doing in the space around fine art and like high-end art and traditional art and how that all connects and links up with NFTs, with some of the possibilities that the Web3 space uh, offers that, you know, the, N the NFT uh, space and, and related uh, technologies and the whole movement around it offers. And that's why I'm really, really excited to be here today with uh, Francesca. <laughs> thanks for having us and, and thanks for uh, being on Ultrasync and, and, and sharing about London trade art today with our viewers. Thank you so much to you for having me and Ultrasync, of course. I'm very excited to be here and involved in this amazing project. Thank you. Good, wonderful. Look, uh, Francesca, so you know, can we start by finding out a little bit about London trade art? Like, what do you do? What is the project all about? What's the venture all about? Let's start by that. So, so you know, we get, we get a good entry point. Of course, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, so uh, London Trade Art, since uh, 2016 now, has been offering uh, a diversified art investment service, uh, both online uh, through our marketplace uh, and offline through our um, bespoke art advisory service, uh, which has been dedicated to both uh, privates and corporates. But uh, since its foundation, our main uh, final goal uh, was to create an art exchange. So a, a digital uh, platform uh, which would have allowed uh, people, everyone, uh, to become a corner of high-valued artworks, uh, just buying and selling art shares as per any other financial stock. So we recently proudly launched uh, our first projects of uh, fractional ownership of uh, both digital and physical artworks. I am proud to say that they were big success. So uh, actually we are uh, um, very happy for this uh, big achievement, uh, which wouldn't be actually be possible uh, if we haven't implemented uh, NFTs. So NFTs for us were um, for sure a big boost for, uh, for our model because what we have done, we have associated each art share to a unique and reproducible NFT, okay. which is then given to, uh, to our users uh, uh, once the purchase of our shares is finalized. Our shares, okay. So let's unpack that a little bit. There was a couple of things in there and what we're especially interested in is like the innovation that happens when you, know, when you go to those tools and you bring them to your domain, which is the art world, and you apply them, you know, to create uh, uh, products and services and offerings, you know, by doing that kind of creative application of what the technology allows you. So you talked about a couple of things. We talked about art exchange, fractionalized uh, art ownership. Can you tell us a little bit about like how that works? What what's the what are the details there? So, you know, what's the fractionalized ownership like that you're offering? How do you link uh, artworks? you know, physical artworks with NFT. Can you give us some more, more details on that? Of course. Uh, so starting from the uh, fractional ownership model, this works uh, uh, both, as I said, on physical and digital artworks. So what we do, we take the artworks uh, and we split their market value into multiple shares, uh, the so-called uh, Okay. NFT art shares. Then we issue them uh, on our platform uh, on, uh, on London Trade Art, uh, where at the moment a primary market is available to purchase one or more art shares available and uh, uh, related to this uh, uh, selected uh, uh, blue chip art or uh, digital art. So wait, wait, B blue chip art? What's a blue chip? I, I mean, you know, we need I to like it. let's let's <laughs> let's like break down all of the yeah, components. Yeah. What is blue chip art? <laughs> blue Blue chip art uh, uh, are yeah. artworks uh, in okay. the range uh, of uh, uh, renowned uh, artists, uh, very popular artists, uh, international uh, uh, artists. Like, so a, like a Jackson Pollock. Exactly, okay. yes. Yeah. How, so who determines who joins the ranks of blue chip art and who doesn't? Like 
as per any other market, okay. uh, the market. Yes, so yeah. supply, okay. supply, demand. Uh, rules so is there everything. a certain price uh, uh, tag when no. you when you above that price tag, then you're blue chip art? No, it's not really about price. It's more about okay. the recognition of the of the artist. Uh, if the uh, the artist uh, uh, is featured on main uh, um, auctions, for example. Uh, okay. So the auction, which auctions it's featured. Is it also important whether the artist was had a, a, an exhibition, you know, or, or whatever, like a section dedicated to them on something like a frieze or an art basil or something like that? Does For that sure. So that yes. matters too, to, yes. to, to make them blue chip? Okay. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, uh, of course, there are many characteristics that you have to take into consideration when you evaluate an art investment. Uh, when you recognize a blue chip is because uh, they are worldwide famous, uh, meaning that they have been featured in, uh, as I say, the famous auctions, uh, uh, art fair, uh, international art fairs. They have taken part uh, to um, solo shows uh, and represented by one of the main international galleries uh, sustained by uh, the market. Uh, uh, and uh, what I is also important is that uh, for this kind uh, of blue chip art, mm -hmm. the market uh, is uh, uh, stable over time. So it increases, uh, but less than, uh, let's say, emerging uh, artists. Uh, okay, or okay. Other so once, once an artist is considered as that kind of Premier League, you know, mm. like top range blue chip art, that artwork will only appreciate in value from that point onward? Like it's very or, uh, likely. Depreciation is not likely, right? Like uh, exactly. So yeah. that's the point in the art market in general. And that's it's not like getting a car and the car will depreciate over time. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, uh, like this is the other way around. Yes, okay. Exactly. It's, like it's more like a nice, good in wine. Vintage okay. Porsche, for example. Okay. Yeah, that it's will have a selector, collector value. Will. Like, yeah. and that, that will, yeah, absolutely, that, that will increase. So it's, it's about, okay, so that's the dynamic that's operating there. And, and obviously, um, to have access to buying those. So blue chip art is, is a good asset class for investors, right? It's like, obviously, Absolutely. there's many reasons why investors always have been interested in that. Um, some of the reason is maybe also that it's, th it's not so traceable, <laughs> you know, I don't know. The, what I mean, but, but, but okay, let's, yeah. let's take it. it is let's take but okay, let's, let's <laughs> take it, uh, you know, like the fact that it is a good investment asset uh, on its own on its own right like it appreciates in value right so only very few people traditionally or, or classically will have had access to to these kind of top-notch artworks which are really good investment assets investment class you know a class of investment uh, investable assets so how do you change that dynamic how do you change that game with your offering with what you're with what you're offering with fractionalized um, access. How does that change things? Yes, the, the whole point actually uh, is mm. to democratize uh, this kind of art investment. Uh, um, our main goal is to modernize uh, the art market, the art system, uh, to expand uh, the art audience uh, through the application of for example, of innovative technologies. But the point is that uh, we would like to give the opportunity to everyone to own at least a piece mm. of this kind uh, of uh, um, very uh, safe but also alternative uh, assets, uh, able to diversify the portfolio of investments uh, and, of course, uh, to give you uh, also uh, the, uh, the prestige of, uh, of owning this kind of uh, uh, blue chip art. Amazing, amazing. I mean, no, we love to hear that, and we'll. I mean, I'm always very interested in in how these, you know, our this new stack of technologies that we have and that we're creating, how it can be applied to decentralize, to democratize, to like change business models, give more people access, and create more value too. Frankly, right? Yeah. Uh, but so that's great that you're doing that. Like, what does that look like then? Is that like as an individual who comes to London Trade Art, they'll be able to get a fraction? of a blue chip uh, piece of art which otherwise they wouldn't have access to or 
Or do they have to team? How does the technical side work? Do they have to team up with others? Do I have to like bring three buddies and say like, okay, we're gonna <laughs> split this, <laughs> or or do you take care no, of all of that? No, you're fine by yourself. Okay, no, no worries. So how do you? No, uh, it's very um, <laughs> easy and accessible our platform. So everyone really is able to log in, select the amount of shares they're interested in, and just uh, purchase them outright. So to receive on their wallet uh, their NFT, which is uh, of course safely linked to a blockchain and uh, the, the NFT also is associated to the digital certificate of authenticity of the artwork, the digital certificate of ownership uh, and uh, all the other metadata available so that uh, it's very secure, it's very transparent, everything is traceable and uh, yes, it's uh, at the disposal of everyone really who wants to invest in art. So Amazing. What's the wallet that they need? You said they have a wallet, you know, is it a Solana or Ethereum or like Polygon. Polygon, uh, Polygon, Polygon network? blockchain. Great. Okay. Yes, that's right. Okay, great. Uh, so, okay, so they get the, the that uh, certificate of ownership as an NFT. Is that right? And then yeah. that NFT, you hold on to it. Uh, what does that, it, what does that consist of? Is it just that NFT? Is there also a, is there also some digital art connected with it or? Is it just like the ownership of the physical asset that you have as a certificate? So the, uh, the mm -hmm. NFT really represents the art shares that you buy. So uh, linked to it, uh, there's also the digital certificate of authenticity that you buy. Really, you're buying the digital certificate of, of authenticity, as you yeah. say. Uh, you are not buying uh, a, a, pix a pixel, or you're not buying crypto art. You're buying uh, um, the certificate uh, um, linked uh, to the physical artwork. Uh, so that's, I think, is what really uh, is kind of innovative, uh, I think, in our model, because we strongly believe that NFTs can revolutionize the art system, uh, not only for the crypto art uh, mm -hmm. realm, uh, but also for the uh, more, let's say, traditional uh, mm -hmm. physical art market. That's amazing. So how do you see, first of all, like, okay, how was that, how is that received by, by people you're dealing with right now? Who are people that are responding to it? I, I'd love to just, you know, from a demographic perspective, I'd love to mm -hmm. know if it's, you know, your old same clientele that was previously buying these artworks and now they're just using your system. Or if you have actually had a different type of clientele and different type of customers now come to you, which otherwise wouldn't have come to you. Yeah, no, definitely. Mm -hmm. Our clientele uh, is very heterogeneous in this sense. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have some uh, uh, traditional uh, art buyers uh, uh, with whom we have uh, um, strengthened our uh, collaboration and relationship uh, uh, over the years. But uh, we have actually expanded uh, our target of clients to corporates, financial professionals, and NFT uh, enthusiasts. Uh, oh, okay. because Yes, some sometimes uh, um, we think that art collect art collectors are divided in multiple categories, as you as we know. Yeah. Uh, the most conservative uh, um, uh, category. Uh, is still struggling to digest uh, this kind uh, of model, but uh, uh, the NFTs uh, um, uh, trend uh, along with the fractional ownership uh, and other kind of innovation that we are uh, uh, facing in the art market are actually expanding so much the art audience. So for example, for the uh, NFT uh, community, um, they, mm, they represent that kind of audience who wouldn't have bought uh, at a physical art gallery, wouldn't have been uh, interested in physical artworks. Uh, they are looking into something different because time, times are changing. <laughs> so the art market uh, has to change as well. Sure. I mean, but people who buy NFTs, uh, you know, as an asset because they're trying to flip them and make money, right? Mm -hmm. Or because they're trying to hold on to them as a... S either they're trying to flip them and make money or they're trying to hold on to it as a status object, you know, and, and just say like, look, look at my collection, you know, I have these NFTs. But those people, are they the same people that, mm. you know, the person who buys an ape or, a, you know, CryptoPunk or whatever, yeah. is that is that the same type of person who uh, will buy, you know, uh, a who would buy a piece of art, 
you know, as an, as an investment asset to hold on to, or is it, or is it different people? Like, is it, are you getting people to come in now and, and get these NFTs because they're excited about the, the fact that you have turned the art into NFTs and have fractionalized it, mm -hmm. but, but otherwise they wouldn't have necessarily bought a kind of traditional artwork? Yep. Is that, do you get a lot of those people too? Um, I would say half and half to be okay. honest. So uh, there are some uh, um, collectors, uh, uh, at least for, uh, for London Trade Art, uh, who are buying uh, our NFTs because they are associated to a blue chip physical art. And there are uh, other collectors who are buying NFTs because they are just NFTs uh, and they are already right. looking into resell it. Uh, mm -hmm. um, after a few years, I would recommend, of course, because uh, it's still, uh, you know, a different sort of investment uh, compared to uh, crypto art uh, uh, for example mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so yes there's a little bit uh, of um, of both uh, this kind of uh, uh, of clients great great I mean you know so NFTs or just uh, even before NFTs just using blockchains and using tokenization in order to fractionalize assets which are otherwise not fractionalized right has been obviously a major use case for, for Web3 and for blockchain. You know, since 2017, 18, there's been, I think, already some projects trying to do that. It's not even that new. It's only mm -hmm. that 2020, we had obviously the huge NFT explosion and everybody's now looking at it. But I remember there was projects trying to do something like fractionalized art and fractionalized things in, I think, you know, in 2017, definitely. Yeah. So um, I is that like, and but always these, uh, whether that's fractionalizing real estate or fractionalizing other, you know, assets, kind of large assets, land, and so on, there's always been uh, regulatory problems and problems with legal and with like how do you kind of build that bridge between the old school legal system, which says that this is an asset and it's in this jurisdiction, it belongs to this, and here's the title deed, and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. and how do you bridge that with the blockchain where we have everything just on code? and smart contracts and so on. Is there a lot of work that you had to do for that bridge? Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of work indeed. Yeah. Uh, we want to, um, to make sure that all the legal aspects uh, are under control. And uh, I have to say that we are trying to be kind of uh, uh, pioneering uh, in, this, uh, in this field. We have uh, partner with uh, Withers, uh, um, uh, the international law firm, uh, to uh, create uh, our contract of use, the uh, joint ownership agreement. Uh, and so we are partnering also with uh, the Studio Menini uh, and Associati in, uh, uh, in Milan. Uh, to that sounded Italian. Yes, what, you just it's right <laughs> what are they called? Uh, Studio Menini Associati. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is it a legal firm? It's a legal firm, uh -huh. and uh, we are now doing uh, a deep research uh, of all the legal implication and framework uh, related mm -hmm. also from a um, fiscal point of view okay. related to the NFTs, the use of them, and mm -hmm. uh, we want to be, as I said, uh, very sure that everything uh, is secure and uh, transparent, but still is a gray area. So we have to deal with the fact that mm -hmm. uh, there's still a lot of uh, work to do in this, uh, in this field. Is uh, that a risk factor? If I'm trying to buy this, uh, uh, this NFT to get fractionalized ownership, and then I wonder, hey, what if like in two years or something, there's some regulator turns up and says that this is not even valid. You know, I mean, I'm not saying obviously, yeah, hopefully, yeah, but, yeah. but is that a consideration that a buyer would have or, or no? no? Is it like you have that security like Absolute, to say that, okay, yeah. this is guaranteed? It's absolutely okay. guaranteed and secured. And that's why we have done I had uh, it's such a deep due diligence uh, right. of uh, everything that uh, um, had to be taken care of has been taken. You're working care. closely with the law firms Absolutely. and so on. So yeah, I mean that's yes, obviously. So maybe that's something for, for for entrepreneurs in the Web three space who are thinking about like uh, you know using a DAO for uh, uh, managing this their their venture or using NFTs to to get access to some new asset class, which is obviously a lot of people thinking about. Obviously, the, to have the legal side understood and really doing very thorough due diligence is super important, right? Super like, yeah. important, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for everybody. 
Great. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that sounds that sounds great. Like, wh where do you think this is going, like, in terms of... Uh, how, before we talk about where do you think London trade art going, how, where do you think the space in general is going? Like, what, what's, what's, what's in your perspective? What's next for NFTs? What could be next for that connection between NFT and art? How do you feel that space could evolve? Like, do you have any... I mean, not crystal ball, but do you have yeah. any kind of <laughs> just your own kind of ideas or intuitions about so it like, that you could um, share? First of all, uh, I truly believe that uh, NFTs uh, came to stay in the art market. Uh, I really refuge from the idea that uh, it's a, a speculative bubble. I really believe that the great uh, benefits and advantages that uh, NFTs can bring to the art market uh, um, succeeds any kind of uh, market trend, let's say, in terms uh, of uh, solving major issues of the art market, like, as we say, the transparency, so the opaqueness of the system, black market, <laughs> uh, but also regulating and legitimating uh, the digital uh, uh, art market, so the crypto art market, uh, uh, giving artists the opportunity to get royalties uh, from the NFTs uh, is a great revolution uh, for uh -huh. the whole market. Yeah. So I do believe that uh, the future for the NFTs will be um, for sure uh, a positive increasing trend, uh, but particularly I believe that uh, uh, they will be applied uh, uh, even more often, uh, not only to crypto art, but to, to uh, physical art to uh, add uh, an additional warranty of what we most need in the art market, um, as, mm, certificates and uh, warranties of provenance, uh, ownership uh, and mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. traceability of the trades. Right. So traceability, provenance and so on and so forth that obviously, you know, it could be taken care of uh, really well if, if things were linked to an NFT. Do you think also that, you know, there comes a time when every artist that makes an artwork automatically, directly will also issue, issue it as an NFT, the NFT being some kind of digital copy of it, maybe in the metaverse, right? Like where you have that exact same artwork replicated in the metaverse and then that is an NFT connected to an NFT which, you know, makes it unique. And, 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 and obviously then that would allow the artist to uh, receive royalties, as you said, uh, always, you know, even on secondary markets, you know, even on the black markets, then if that yeah. even <laughs> exists, that was the one that exists anymore. Yes. But, you know, whatever that, it, it replace that. Yes, you know, if you think yeah. about contemporary artists, uh, if they would, uh, uh, if they would make uh, their certificate of authenticity uh, into NFTs, uh, so we would have a major transparency, which doesn't exist in the art market, just with this uh, uh, small change, you know. You just have to create an NFT to uh, link and access uh, the, the certificate yeah. of authenticity. And the same when you pass the ownership uh, of an artwork. Uh, you register it on a, on a blockchain uh, and uh, you link it to an NFT. Done. Uh, we solve many, many problems. <laughs> Right, right. How big is the art market, by the way? Uh, it's, it's very, very big. big. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. very big. <laughs> it's in the billions. Yeah. The billions, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. And, and yeah, and part of that is obviously going to be like the, the black market, like not, yeah. which is not, which means it's not uh, accounted for in, in like, it means people don't pay tax on it. That's, that's so, what we um, use Think about the yeah. fact that the black art market yeah. is second only to the drug market. Uh, so it's huge. Okay. Uh, art market uh, uh, is valued billions. Uh, only the uh, online, uh, online art market mm -hmm. is uh, uh, more than 14 billion. So right. um, black market uh, um, has been created uh -huh. by many art players uh, yeah. during history uh, for many reasons uh, because uh, 
money laundering uh, right, uh, right, easy right, way right. To, to escape taxes uh, mm -hmm. and uh, um, for uh, uh, also the um, dealers or uh, uh, galleries for example it's an easy you know sure. trading asset uh, uh, yeah, which can not always be recorded and so. you can transport it pretty easily I mean you know I mean yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a thing you can transport it right and you yeah. have like millions of dollars in there in a, in a yeah. The thing that you know that is easily, you know, easily to be taken from A to B. But then obviously the question of you know obviously some question that has been huge always in the art world is is the question of forgery and fake, right? But because mm -hmm. if it's one thing that is that I can move and there is millions of dollars moved, yeah, uh, there is obviously always the possibility for that thing to be fake, right, or to be recreated by somebody, you know, to kind yeah, of wants to tap course. into that space. So uh, how like. That's is that that's that's huge, right? In the art space, like forgeries yeah. are uh, very very common, unfortunately. Very common. Yeah. Okay. How does that uh, change? Does that change in any way uh, that whole dynamic around art forgery and fake uh, art and so on? Like, does that is that is there a way for NFTs to to impact that? Uh, yes, for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, um, also because. Uh, um, for the for the same characteristics that we mentioned, the fact that they, they bring uh, uh, security uh, about uh, provenance and uh, uh, authenticity, they can really um, help to, to solve this uh, this big issue. Now, I think that with NFTs, uh, um, we um very often refer to just digital uh, uh, artwork but uh, if we find uh, new ways as i said to link it to physical art mm -hmm. for s um, first of all for the authenticity of uh, uh, of the artwork so it would be it would be great uh, to have this uh, tool uh, um uh, to sustain uh, that that piece uh, is not fake you yeah. know I guess there is still the issue that, you know, I mean, you're linking the NFT to a physical asset, but you have the input output problem. Like you still need to verify, you know, in the real world, like physically, you still need to verify that this artwork oh, yeah. is like correct because, you know, it could, it could, you know, you could take a forgery and, and link an NFT to it. Yeah. The NFT won't know, obviously, you know, yeah. what the Oracle or the input or whatever it is like that off chain, on chain connection. Mm -hmm what it tells it about that, you know, about that off-chain asset. So, okay, um, so maybe still a lot to, to figure out there. Yes, there should yeah. be, I think, mm -hmm. a link which, for example, there are some companies, uh, uh, they are working on providing uh, QR codes attached on the back right. of the canvas, right. which are then a link to blockchain. Uh, not yet NFTs, but I think a uh, um, natural evolution for them would be to mm -hmm. integrate uh, NFTs or these kind of things like digital prints uh, on the canvas so that you have the physical asset, but you are 100% sure that the uh, digital representation of it, so the uh, Mm. NFTs uh, is uh, exactly linked uh, and uh, um, the, the, the digital representation uh, of it. So this link, I think, is it's key to right, be created. Right, right. Absolutely. So yeah, still a lot of innovations uh, and kind of new value propositions to come for for ventures in the space. And it, I mean, it's so it's so uh, you know it's so innovative and it's evolving so fast. And there's still so much that's needed. Yeah. Like in the space, in the whole Web3 space, as we're trying to really build a new economy, you know, and taking the, you know, or, or at least evolving the existing economy to have that extra layer, yeah. that Web3 layer. So, yeah, that's one super interesting uh, uh, field for further innovation. Now, I mean, where, where, do you, where do you see, how do you see London Trade Art? Uh, now let's speak about like London Trade Arts, uh, you know, projection or future. How do you see... Where do you see like um, your opportunities in 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 the space, and, and and how do you see yourself evolving or your venture evolving? So first of all, we are uh, uh, working on the secondary market of the art exchange, so to allow people not only to buy the NFT shares but also to resell them uh, within a very transparent, uh, dynamic uh, uh, market, which we recreate some characteristics of the financial trading system. So, uh, oh, that's the exchange part that you mentioned. In the the exchange yeah? part. Okay, can yes. you tell us more about that? Like, how is that? What is that going to look like? 
so it will be um, like uh, uh, you, uh, every user, sorry, will have uh, like a financial book, so they will be able to issue, buy and uh, um, offer prices, so the prices they are willing to buy or uh, uh, to sell the art shares uh, available uh, on, uh, on the platform. So uh, right now we have this primary market, so you can already buy uh, art shares with the secondary market, which will be live in the first quarter 2022 we will lease our artworks we will give the opportunity to also to our corners uh, to temporarily hold uh, the uh, the blue chip art uh, so actually oh, man the actual <laughs> art like to hold it physically yes for okay. a temporary amount of time depending on how many shares uh, the the user has bought oh, okay. so let's say that you buy the 20 percent uh, of our boetti uh, so mm -hmm. you will get it for the 20 percent of the year that's of course uh, okay. uh, subject to the some circumstances and conditions sure. that must if be guaranteed shared, if your fractionalized orders are spread around the world it's going to be logistically a bit difficult for you, I guess, but you, yeah, you yeah. organize that, that access. Yeah, yeah because London Trade Art okay. acts as the agent, the manager of the mm -hmm. artworks. So we will manage the, let's say, the annual calendar of the artwork. So we will make sure that, of course, maintenance, conservation, and uh, all the conditions of the artwork are uh, uh, pressed that's taken and care guaranteed. Of, and, and that's like in part of, that's part of the, the cost probably of the cost of the product is like inbuilt that maintenance and the yeah transport, right? that's right yeah okay 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 no okay that's that's amazing that's that's so cool so you just said something about the exchanges and 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 the metaverse as well and and obviously you said like you're launching some of this stuff you know you said q1 21 so by the time uh you guys are watching this this may already be out fingers and crossed yeah yeah <laughs> and we'll have like all the links below so you can check out uh what London trade art is up to and how you can get involved but uh, you're so you're said about the that one, one part that was really exciting is uh, the metaverse aspect that you're looking into so what what is, what are your thoughts there is it like is this exchange going to have like a virtual counterpart in the metaverse or what are the possibilities there that you're envisaging so mm -hmm. we are actually uh, really investigating the, the field, but uh, uh, what we would uh, um, uh, what would be our goal is to have maybe um, some shop uh, in a bigger metaverse, uh, uh, so to have the opportunity to uh, make our users uh, um, more involved in uh, in the field, so they can also not only shop but also exhibit their uh, digital. Uh, or uh, uh, the representation of the physical artworks uh, um, in our art gallery, something like this, uh, which could be um, uh, an hybrid between an art gallery um, and an exhibition space. Uh, so to uh, give the opportunity, as I said, to our community of clients to um, use, to uh, enjoy uh, the, the NFT art. Right. I mean, yeah, there is already, I mean, obviously, uh, with regards to metaverse and art and creations, there's been uh, concerts, you know, performances, obviously, you oh know, yeah. very big ones, you know, whether that's in, in Fortnite or whatever, in, in on Decentraland and so on, like, or, or in, the, in some of the existing kind of persistent uh, uh, metaverses, whether, the, whether they're the blockchain NFT ones or not, you know, or, yeah. or the other, or the other kind of worlds uh, that would be a contender for metaverses. But um, so a gallery of, you know, is also something that people are doing, you know, having galleries in there. Where do you see, wh what's the, what is the exchange aspect there that you were mentioning? Like, is that, does that, apply? is that basically just a space in the metaverse where people can come and talk to others? And does that exchange require for people to talk to each other and, and to, or, or no. So the art exchange uh, uh, would be separated from uh, from the metaverse. Okay. Uh, the metaverse, we think about it as an extension uh, of our uh, um, uh, art gallery, online art gallery. Uh, so that what we want to do in the real world, uh, let's mm -hmm. say, as I said, is to create uh, many live events and uh, uh, exhibitions uh, and uh, potentially to uh, resell the artworks also uh, offer 
offline and we want to give the same opportunities also uh, on the digital uh, world uh, through the metaverse uh, allowing people to get involved from wherever they are uh, and uh, uh, just uh, engaging uh, uh, our uh, our audience in uh, in this sense so uh, the as, as i said it, it must be uh, still investigated sure i, mean, uh, I think everybody we all kind of yeah. investigating <laughs> and trying to figure out what's happening there. exactly I mean, do you think you know there's people who say like in four years uh, by 2025 Eighty percent of work meetings will be in the metaverse. Yeah. Right. I mean, this is people like Bill Gates said this recently, yes. or someone. It's not like some <laughs> some futurist said yes. this. You know, like uh, it seems to be like all the major, biggest uh, tech companies and so on. Yeah. They have decided that, uh, that this is what it's going to happen. And Mark Zuckerberg said that yeah. the uh, AR glasses will be uh, as popular as smartphones in right. a few years. Right. So well, yeah. maybe we will remeet uh, yeah. in two or three <laughs> years with AR glasses in the metaverse. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that sounds like such a massive change, uh, you know, in the people's habits and people's like how people experience things. And it's not super far away. It's literally like like. You know, in our, yeah, in yeah. our coming kind of near future. So how do you think that looks like in for art? Like, what does that mean for art? The fact that uh, so much of our time is going to be spent in virtual worlds, which are by definition something creative, because, you know, you need to, you have like these asset designers yeah. who are creating all kinds of stuff. How does that, what is that going to do to art? Um... Actually, in art, more than uh, in any ca any can any other industry, I see it uh, as a natural uh, development of what is already happening, and necessarily digitalization of the industry, which was of course forced by the pandemic, uh, so that uh, every gallery, every art fair uh, had to go digital. So they have already. Um, investigated uh, and developed uh, many online uh, rooms, uh, uh, VR, AR experiences. Uh, so I think that the metaverse being uh, even more engaging uh, and interactive can just be the future for uh, at least uh, um, the international art fairs, because right now we have to tra travel uh, to Miami, Los Angeles, uh, and uh, Basel or whatever uh, to, um, to enjoy the artworks, of course, but to be present at the fair. If you have the metaverse, which uh, helps you to, to be everywhere uh, and to actually be present in uh, at to every, um, specific uh, um, international appointments, then of course uh, is is very effective and efficient. Mm. And and I mean, you know, if we think about it, that you know, our lives, large part of it will be in the metaverse, and you know, people will create art there, and that will have unique identifiers and so on. Um, what about you know? Have you have you thought about you know there's AIs creating art now too like there's mm -hmm. AIs for instance creating music now and sometimes the music is really good you can't tell like if you show it to people they won't be able to tell which one was a, by a real human composer and which one was the AI composer mm -hmm. so I think with regards to paintings and digital art and so on and so forth that's I haven't looked too much into it but I've seen like there's some stuff happening like there is already creations obviously that are created by AIs mm -hmm. um, like if everything's in the digital world anyways, and uh, where's that, you know, where's that, how does that, I mean, the, the AI could own an NFT too, right? Mm -hmm. like, it's not just a human that could own an NFT. Yes. Right, that's one of the big things about the Web3 that we are enabling agents to interact, whether they're humans or whatever agents they are, right? They mm -hmm. could be automatic or could be uh, artificial intelligences as well. So, I mean, I'm just kind of thinking like, how how is this, what what does that mean for art and creativity do the boundaries get blurred you know like creatives already sometimes like you know when you talk to somebody are you a creative or an artist they will say artists typically if they are if they don't having any commercial interest for what they are, i mean if they're just if they don't having any commissioned work that they do or something mm -hmm. right? like but th that boundary is already very blurry yeah right between creative and artist uh, do you think that's that's gonna just like disappear completely and 
you know if, if every art mm. is already like some create asset in the creative asset you know in the in the digital world right do we still do we need that boundary between art and just creative work you know mm, I see what you mean yeah well uh, it's tricky for sure but I do believe that uh, uh, we still have to stick to some characteristics uh, uh, when we appreciate and evaluate art. So to uh, differentiate uh, what is art uh, and what is just uh, a creation, a very nice uh, creation. Um, so for example, we have uh, created this uh, ABC of art evaluation, which is now on our website, uh, uh, to help people to understand what is actually art. Okay. Uh, there are many... Um, I'd love to understand too, <laughs> <laughs> please tell me. But yeah, the ABC course. of art evaluation, yes, you can check that out. Right. But yeah, how, so how does that work? What is it? So uh, when you evaluate an artwork, you uh -huh. have to take into consideration not just the object, physical or digital you have to understand who is the artist the curriculum of the artist mm -hmm. uh, how difficult uh, was the production uh, of that specific art artwork uh, and if the artist has been featured in a solo or group shows uh, if it's already part of uh, any relevant collection so there are many objective and uh, not objective characteristics that define what an art is and the value of it because the value also has to be backed up uh, mm -hmm. by some uh, um, objectiveness, if that makes sense. So I think that also in the digital world, now there is a little bit of confusion, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it's a transitional process. So we will come to a point where we will be able to distinguish uh, mm -hmm. blue chip digital artists okay. <laughs> and okay. uh, uh, something uh, uh, less mm -hmm. valuable and just without going too much into the details but what's the would you say is the main thing that makes it uh, art and or even blue chip digital art like what's the main thing that differentiates that from uh, just a creative you know like uh, who, you know you, you commission them to make some assets for you right like wha what's the what was the main thing that you would say like that de de determines that boundary Yes, yeah. so the, the research of the artist, uh, if the artist uh, has a background uh, in, uh, in, in their art uh, okay. uh, or not, uh, the difficulty of, uh, of the artwork, uh, the technique and the production of it, uh, and uh, uh, the, let's say, uh, the art players uh, who sustain the, uh, the artworks or the artist. So yes, there are a little bit uh, of uh, uh, multiple conditions that uh, uh, go together to define the value of an artwork. Okay, so I mean, the art world and the metaverse and all of this is going to change so much and evolve so much. Uh, how do like traditional art institutions and players like your big auction houses and so on, how are they like reacting to this right now? How are they dealing with all of this change that, you know, a company like yours is spearheading? So uh, we have a mix of reactions, really. Uh, the fact that uh, uh, the NFTs, for example, are supported and backed up by major auction houses like Sotheby's and Christie's uh, actually is a kind of a great and big statement uh, in the art market because, uh, of course, they are uh, uh, trend makers. And uh, I think uh, it's the very first uh, uh, digital innovation vision that they embraced. So I think that uh, uh, for this reason uh, the, the majority of, uh, of the art players are following the trend. Um, as for uh, other kind uh, of uh, technologies or uh, innovative models, uh, they are struggling a little bit more to get digested by the more conservative and traditional art market. But it's just a matter of time because we are actually facing as we said, a necessarily digitalization of the art system. So uh, fractional ownership uh, models, for example, uh, um, are being uh, digested and ac accepted uh, in these last few years uh, along with uh, other uh, more disruptive uh, uh, projects. So uh, 
I think that uh, now the, the path is clear and uh, the, the, dire the direction is taken. Right. I mean, auctions could be like all accessible to everybody in the world and they could happen in the metaverse like at the same time. Mm, yeah. Right. And, and then the question is, do those traditional players evolve to become that or is there going to be disruptors that are faster and that they would do it differently and then they replace them? Right. But you're saying right now, they are, it's like probably every other industry, it's a mixed bag. There's some going along with the disruption and others lagging behind. Uh, yes, other, others are lagging behind, but at the same time, I think that uh, sooner or later they will have to adjust to this uh, major change. Um, the, the art market uh, has been famous for being very reluctant to adopt technological advancements. But uh, as I said, due to pandemic, we had to face a necessary revolution. So now that uh, uh, it's begun, uh, we just have to, to follow, uh, to follow this, uh, this process. So also the, uh, the most reluctant uh, art players uh, will adapt. Right, right. Yeah. Disruption is literally just like happening in every industry, obviously, mm. at a faster paces. So yeah, that's amazing. Like, how do you like? Uh, so for, for your existing platform, how do people get involved with it? Like, how do how do artists get involved with it? Like, can an artist come and have their work on your on your platform? Um, you know, how what's the is there an application process or is there do you scout them yourself or what is the process there like? So our team is composed by both art uh, and financial experts. So uh, we have our curator, uh, she's in charge uh, of the artistic selection uh, of, uh, on our platform. Uh, and we have many projects going on. So uh, we deal with emerging artists. We receive many applications throughout the year. So we select those uh, uh, with the same characteristics uh, and the same, uh, uh, let's say, uh, market uh, establishment. Uh, and. Uh, for uh, other projects like the blue chip uh, we deal more with collectors or directly with the uh, uh, with the galleries so it really depends on uh, the the project that uh, we we are following uh, luckily we have kind of strong uh, connections and uh, uh, pa partnerships in uh, in the art industry so we are able uh, to uh, go from the primary market to the secondary depending on the needs okay so a variety of different ways for how you acquire artists whether that's through existing partnerships or scouting curating and so on yeah and now so you're looking to grow your your stock as well or your available you know art works as well like yes for yeah. sure our focus from now on uh, will be on a blue chip art for uh, for the art exchange uh, we actually are uh, already scouting the, uh, the upcoming project, uh, which will be a big name. And uh, uh, we are still expanding our collaborations in the digital um, art realm. So um, collaboration with new digital artists uh, and emerging artists. Um, so yes, we are definitely looking to expand uh, our uh, portfolio. Amazing. And how do people get involved or engaged? If how do they buy shares? What's the process? I mean, you know, just go on the website and check it out. I, I, yes, yeah. go on the website, yeah. uh, check the NFT art section. Mm -hmm. You will find uh, our uh, artworks available uh, in shares, mm -hmm. and then you proceed to uh, to just become a corner of them. <laughs> Great. So I mean, you know, if you want to get involved into uh, fractionalize our ownership and, and or have like that you know that access to specifically curated and chosen artworks combined with like this cutting-edge technology that gives you the certificate and the access you know you can go to London Trade Art and you can see that and, and find out about it uh, and like with regards to the other developments and the and the the innovations that you're looking at doing is there any specific ones that maybe for 2022 you're very excited about? Can you name one thing or one thing that you're looking to roll out in 22? For sure, the yeah. deploy of the secondary market of the art exchange. This is actually was the, the aim of London Trade Art since uh, its foundation. So we are so excited to uh, finally release a, a very long term uh, uh, project. Great, beautiful. So. 
What we are always interested in finding out here is what venturers and innovators like yourself in this space are doing, how they're using Web3 technologies, NFTs, metaverses, you know, various type of, uh, you know, various type of identities, decentralized identities, or other kind of tools that, you know, that we have in that big toolkit of Web3, and how they're using that to create value propositions in their space. I think we found out so much about uh, one very great and interesting uh, use case in the art space where, uh, you know, a lot of people are interested. Obviously, there's a lot of attention to it right now because of the explosion of, of artworks, of digital artworks in the space. And we're going to feature much more about this still. If you check out uh, everything that we have on UltraSync, everything that we have coming up. So make sure to be part of that. Uh, like this video, comment on it, uh, share it for the sake of the algorithm and for the sake of your own education <laughs> and, 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 and to be part of the upcoming uh, announcements as well. Thank you so much, Francesca, Thank you. for sharing with us, for having like this kind of insight to us. Is there anything still that a last kind of thing that you'd like to share with people about how about London Trade Art, about yourself, about NFTs, about what you know is to come? Just to stay tuned for more upcoming, very exciting projects uh, and uh, let's share the passion. That's what we always say. That's our motto. Share your passion. Beautiful. I like that. Share the passion. <laughs> I, I always say sync yourself up. But okay. Okay. <laughs> Share the passion Works and sync well. yourself up. Let's go. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so Francesca. much. It was a Thank pleasure. You. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks. Good. Awesome.